Hey friends, Ash here with GentSense. So I was tagged by George from The Fragrance Apprentice to do this video. And I'm pretty sure that I've actually done this video in the past. I know that this made its way around as a tag video in the past and it's making its way around again, but we're gonna revisit it. We're gonna do this one more time. This is one fragrance per season. So I get to keep one fragrance for spring, one for summer, one for fall, one for winter. And that's the only fragrance I get to wear for each of those seasons, which doesn't sound like a good time for me, but that's what this video is about. Now, when I first started making this list, uh, basically everything that I picked was niche. And I was like, huh, that leaves everything out on the designer side. So let me just split it up. I'll do one list for niche, one list for designer fragrances. So this one is keep one fragrance per season designer edition. Basically though, if I was going to make this niche and designer, it would have ended up being three niche, one designer. And when I do the niche list, I'll let you know which one I would have left out. But for now, let's jump into this one and check out Keep One Fragrance Per Season, designer edition. First up, we'll do spring. And the fragrance that I picked for spring and the fragrance that I picked for summer, you could probably interchange those. You could take the spring fragrance, put it in summer and it would work. You could take the summer fragrance, put it in spring and it would work there as well. Now, when I first started doing this list, the fragrance I thought of was this one, YSL Y Eau de Parfum for spring. This one has apple, sage, ginger, bergamot, amber wood. You've probably heard a lot about this fragrance. Big compliment getter, very versatile. One of the better blue fragrances on the market. It's got good performance. Everybody seems to love it. Yeah, it's sweet. It's got a little bit of that bubblegum kind of vibe in there. And this is the first one I thought about. And then I was thinking, I was mulling it over, I was looking through fragrances and I was thinking, you know, I might get bored of Y Eau de Parfum pretty quickly. Now it's a super solid fragrance and I do like it a lot, but I ended up changing my mind. So the one that I'm going with here is this one, Dior Homme O. And it should go without saying, but if I really had to get rid of all these fragrances and keep only one per season, I would probably get bored of each one of those fragrances really quickly. So this is me making this list sitting here today after going through everything and looking at everything and thinking about it. But you know, if I wore these fragrances for a week or two weeks or three weeks straight, probably change my mind and be like, okay, I'm sick of that. I'd like something different, please. But from where I'm sitting today, these sound good. So yeah, Dior Homme O. This has Iris, which for the longest time was the go-to note for the Dior Homme line, that slightly lipsticky Iris note. Some people will call it makeup-y. This one also has cedar and grapefruit and amber in here. This is almost like the forgotten stepchild in the Dior Homme line. Dior Homme Intense gets a whole lot of love. Uh, the original Dior Homme gets a lot of love. Dior Homme Sport gets a lot of love. Dior Homme Parfum a lot of love, but Dior Homme O kind of falls by the wayside a little bit. So this one is going to be more of a warm weather take on Dior Homme, which is not really a surprise. It's not gonna have that cocoa in here from Dior Homme. It's not going to have leather from some of the other fragrances in the Dior Homme line, those uh, winter-based Dior Homme fragrances. This one is refined, it's clean, uh, it's a little bit soapy, it's fresh, it is gentlemanly and it's on the unique side as far as warm weather fragrances go. This one to me, like I said, could be used in spring or summer, but for me, I think it would fit in a little bit better in spring. When it transitions out of cooler weather into warmer weather, everything starts to bloom outside, everything starts to pop. Something like this that's gonna come across refreshing and clean and soapy, just gonna work so well. And also the quality there quite high being a Christian Dior fragrance. So for spring, Dior Homme. That leads me into summer, and I did the same thing in summer that I did in spring. Now fall and winter, I pretty quickly set my sights on one specific fragrance, and I was like, yeah, probably go with that one. Spring and summer though, I waffled around a little bit. The first fragrance I thought of for summer was this one, Aqua de Jo Profundo. This is basically a modernized version of the original Aqua de Jo over here. 
mineral notes, rosemary, citrus, C notes in here. It is, like I said, a modernized version of the original Aqua de Jo, a little bit of that blue DNA in Profondo. It's also got a green kind of vibe that I pick up along with all those aquatic notes and citrus. This one, clean, refreshing, solid fragrance, obviously very versatile, but I ended up instead going with a different blue fragrance and it's this one, Blue de Chanel, and this is the Eau de Toilette. Grapefruit, incense, ginger, mint, some of the notes in this fragrance. The reason I went with Blue de Chanel is because of all of the blue type fragrances, this one is still in my top three as far as favorites. It may be my favorite. It is extremely versatile, one that you can dress up and wear formally, but you could also easily wear this casually in high heat as well. So it would cover pretty much all my bases in summer. It has that incense, so you could wear it in a, a night out situation, a date night situation, but it's still clean enough that you could pull it off at the office. It's a big compliment puller and I get good performance from it as well. So while this has been sold to death and everybody and their mother seems to own a bottle of this or you know, seems to wear this, I would still go with it because this covers literally any situation I can think of in summer. And I still like the way this one smells. To me, Blue de Chanel still has some class and a little bit of maturity to it where a lot of other blue fragrances don't necessarily come off that way. They come off really youthful sometimes. You know, bubblegummy, sweet, and this one has that dialed back a bit. It's not, you know, hitting you over the head with sweetness. And so Blue de Chanel, my choice for summer. That takes us into fall. And in fall, I picked a fragrance that I really, really love that came out just last year. It's one that I talked about a lot, uh, one that just first time I smelled it, I was like, this is good. And it's this fragrance right here, Armani Code Absolute. Tonka, vanilla, suede, nutmeg, orange blossom, and apple, some of the notes in this fragrance. It does have a similarity to Armani Code Pro Fumo, which is obviously very, very popular flanker in the Armani Code line. When you smell this, if you're familiar with Profumo, you'll pick it up right away. It's not one of those things where it's, you know, a little nuance that you pick out here and there, and then you can draw similarities. Nah, when you spray this on, you're like, yeah, yeah. You can tell that it's derived from Profumo. I mean, there are differences. This one has suede leather instead of just leather, which is not a huge difference, but still a difference. Uh, this one has vanilla instead of amber, which again, not a huge difference. They're both uh, sweet notes and they're both typically used in the base of a fragrance. Uh, they both can impart warmth in a fragrance, but it's still a difference. It doesn't have lavender as a note, whereas Profumo does. It has woody notes where Profumo doesn't, so small differences. The performance is good. It's a sweet kind of fragrance. If you don't like sweet scents, you won't like this one. And whereas in summer, I went with a blue fragrance that was not as heavy on sweetness. In fall, when it starts to get colder, I do like fragrances that have a little more sweetness, a little more richness, a little more warmth a little more spice. I've said, and others have said, that Code Absolute is kind of like taking Profumo and you know trying to class it up a little bit, try to rein in some of the, uh, the issues that maybe make Profumo too cloying for some people, too in your face, too aggressive, too loud. Taking that, reining it in, smoothing it out, and uh, making it a little bit more mature. That's basically what Armani Code Absolute is. That's what it does with the Profumo DNA. Armani Code Absolute Gold, which is a flanker to Absolute, is also very solid. Uh, between the two, I do find myself going back to this one more than Absolute Gold. So I like this one just a little bit more. When I first smelled Absolute Gold, I thought, you know, this might be even, even better than Absolute, like an evolution almost. Like Profumo, was here and it was good and I liked it and then Absolute took it a step further and Absolute Gold took it a step further. But upon further wearings and contrasting and comparing, I still think that Absolute is actually the best of that bunch of the way uh, the code DNA is used. Because those three fragrances, I think you could really put them together. Absolute, Absolute Gold, um, Profumo, and even Armani Code Ultimate, which is another flanker. You could put those all together. Like I said though, best of the bunch to me, is this one, Absolute. So if I could wear only one fragrance in fall and it was a designer as of right now, 
it'd be this one. And that's gonna take me to winter to wrap this list up. And when I thought of winter, this is the fragrance that popped into my head. First thing I thought of. I went over to it and I grabbed it and I smelled it. And I was like, should I go around and start contrasting and comparing a whole bunch of different fragrances to this one and try to talk myself out of it? I said, ah, nah, we'll just go with it. It's the first thing that popped into my head, fragrance that I love. Uh, so it's this one. Pulse of the Night by Issey Miyake. Incense, tonka, amber, vanilla, patchouli, leather, some of the notes in this fragrance. This one smells fantastic in terms of the quality. Now, it's kind of popped onto and off of discounters ever since I first bought this. So sometimes it's not on discounters, it's only on eBay and people are charging jacked up prices. I've said this before, I'll say it again, don't pay jacked up prices for Pulse of the Night. If this is not at discounters, don't go onto eBay and pay $100. Because at discounters, it's typically around, I think, 45, 50 bucks. And if you can get it for less than that, it's an amazing deal. I think at $50, it's still a great deal. It's sweet, it's rich. There's a good amount of depth in here. Uh, there's a little bit of smoke from incense, but not too much. There's a little bit of powder in here as well, though to me, not too much powder either. This one is resinous and balsamic. It's got leather and woods as it dries down, sandalwood being the most prominent woody note in the fragrance. And as I said before, the quality here is so high. It really surprised me the first time I smelled this. I was not expecting this level of just quality and depth and richness. It's really a fantastic wintertime fragrance. Obviously, you look at the note breakdown, amber, tonka, vanilla, three of the most prominent notes in the fragrance, each one of those, a note that's going to give you warmth and sweetness. And that really lets you know what direction this fragrance goes. Uh, incense being the, uh, the other prominent note to me. It is just a banger, a banger. One of my absolute favorite finds of last year one of my favorite designer releases that has come out probably in the last uh, five, six, seven years. It's, it's really a great release and one that I am probably not going to get tired of. Now, again, if I only had one fragrance all winter and I had to wear that, you know, 90 days in a row, you could check back with me and I might be very well tired of that, but it's the first thing that came into my mind. First thing I thought of when I thought of a high quality wintertime fragrance that's gonna set me apart from other people, uh, that's what I thought of. EC Miyake does get some love for some of their cool weather kind of fragrances. Or Ensemble and Noir Ombre are two fragrances that get a lot of love. For me, Pulse of the Night is better than Or Ensemble. And with Noir Ombre, it's right there, maybe a little bit below Noir Ombre, but Noir Ombre, much, 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 much harder to find at this point. I mean, you're gonna pay astronomical prices, basically, if you can find a bottle of that. Whereas this, still pre pretty easy to find. And for me, I have more of an attachment to this fragrance. So that one, Isimiyaki Pulse of the Night, is gonna wrap this up, so. One fragrance per season, designer list. We've got Dior Homme Eau for spring, Bleu de Chanel Eau de Toilette for summer, Armani Code Absolu for fall, and then Pulse of the Night by Issey Miyake for winter. I already have the list for my niche fragrances ready to go, so I'll film that video here very soon and get that out, and then kind of tie this all up with a bow with uh, the whole one fragrance per season thing. All right, guys, it's gonna do it for me. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all of your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.